You can't have too much of a good thing, they say. Or maybe it's the opposite. I, I don't really know. It doesn't matter because the movies I'm talking about today stopped having good things after the first movie. Or maybe they made it to and before it became a total disaster. Today, I want to talk about the top five dumbest, worst, most awful, a little bit redundant, movie franchises still operating today, still thriving in some cases. I don't need to waste any time. Let's begin. If you are subscribed to this channel, you might be scratching your head going, <laughs> didn't Adam just cover this? Except for he did 10 of them the other day on a live stream. Well, yeah, but if you watch the live stream, you know that that was a complete disaster. It was an absolute shit show because for some reason, my internet provider decided uh, on a whim, hey, let's start messing with Adam's life. That live stream is still up right now. You can listen to it. Please don't watch it. But please, it's it's unwatchable, really, anyways. So you, you can listen, and I think the audio is okay. I, have, I refuse to go back and listen. So what I thought I would do is instead of top 10, I would do five, and I would go into a little bit more details about not only where they went wrong, but steps they could take to fix or maybe reboot or, you know, whatever. We're not going to walk away. That's not an option. These franchises are too popular. They make too much money. The studios will not walk away. So we are operating under the assumption that these will go on until we all die and they will live far past us. With that in mind, let's go to the number five spot, which is... Terminator. James Cameron and Arnold Schwarzenegger made two movies to be very proud of. Terminator 2 especially, still considered one of the greatest action movies of all time. T1, I don't think anybody calls it that except for me just this one time only, that's considered a really good horror film. And it's right to be considered a really good one because it is. A single machine hell-bent on stalking and killing its prey, sent from the future to fix the past. At least fix it in the game for the machines so that they can sustain their life and go on living prosperously. Um, what I love about these movies is how gritty and grounded they are. But things quickly turn into hell in a handbasket as we get to T3. It's got a supermodel villain. It's not scary or threatening. The characters have all been replaced. Sarah Connor's killed off screen unceremoniously. The Terminator is back in a third version of itself. It's so bad. It's just so dumb. And and you can like this movie on a, you know, superficial comical standpoint, but to to put it up on the same pedestal as T1 and 2 is is asinine, and I don't think anybody actually does that to be fair. I will also say this. There are Terminator movies that come after 1 and 2 that are at least fun to watch. They're engaging, they're they're silly, they're dumb. And it's entertaining popcorn flick, humor and, and action. And that's okay. That's fine. No judgment day if you like those. I don't mind Dark Fate. I've got on record. I know I'm in the very, very small minority here that likes that film. But I don't love it. And I certainly don't put it on the same level as Terminator 1 and 2. It's just that after so many bad Terminator movies... By the time Dark Fate rolled around, I have no expectations at all outside of give me some cool action and, and I don't care about the story because the story is shit. It's a soft reboot. It does a disservice to original characters, much like Terminator 3 did. Much like Terminator Salvation did with its dumbass plot that makes no sense. Much like Terminator Genesis. I mean, there's so many of them and they're all kind of dumb at the end of the day after 1 and 2. And so what I would like to see the studio do... Since we can't walk away, of course, Dark Fate was a financial and uh, critical, I don't know if it's a critical bomb. I think it did okay with critics, but it was definitely a financial bomb. It might have been a critical one too. I, don't quote me. But uh, what we need to do is walk away from this and we need to go back to the basics. Let's do what Prey did for the Predator franchise. Let's build up a singular character again and yeah, I guess it would be kind of a soft reboot, wouldn't it? But I don't want it to be called Terminator. I don't want it to have anything to do with the Terminator name. Call it The Machines. Call it, uh, you know, whatever. Who gives a crap? As long as it doesn't have Terminator in the title. But people, audiences will know that this is somehow connected to that storyline. Much like Prey did. And I think it worked for many. It definitely worked for me. I love that movie. It's its own thing, but it definitely takes a lot of inspiration from the original. But it goes a different route. It goes a different tone with it. That's what I'd like to see. All right, let's talk about number four on the list, which is 
Transformers. There are five Michael Bay Transformers movies. There is one prequel movie called Bumblebee that I think later was retconned to not actually be a prequel to the Michael Bay movies, but a prequel to another timeline which features the be the rise of the beasts or whatever this newish Transformers film was that came out last year. These are very, 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 very dumb films. Watchable, yeah, of course. If you like high octane action explosions, some fun one-liners, little quips, some comedy, Michael Bay's pretty good at all that. Especially in the first one. I really liked the first Transformers film. I liked the the vantage point of taking it from Sam Witwicky's point of view. Sam's looking up, he sees all this chaos. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's I don't even think the animators know what's happening. They're just putting a lot of CG together. But it looks good. You look at new modern shit, it doesn't look near as good as Transformers 1 does. It's a testament to how much the animation studios cared, how much time they had to work on their craft. Now it's just churn and burn, baby. They don't got time. They got 13 more projects in the pipeline. But Transformers 1 gets it right. It does a good job blending these new characters with the Transformers that we love. And sure, yeah, a lot of them uh, kind of look the same-ish. Not, not a lot of differentiating between Starscream and Megatron. A lot of just, you know, kind of sharp edges and metals. But <laughs> voice acting was on point. I, I don't know. I got a soft spot for Transformers 1. The sequels get so stupid, though. Every single one gets worse. And by the time 4 rolls around, Shia LaBeouf's gone. Megan Fox has been gone since uh, the third one. And now we got fucking Mark Wahlberg? Who wanted Mark Wahlberg? Oh, it looks like you found a Transformer. Oh, yeah, Mark Wahlberg. It's lame. It's so lame. Bumblebee was fine. It was a nice little charming, quaint picture, taking things back down to basics. But this new one, again, it just goes for broke already. It doesn't kind of ratchet up calmly. It goes way too heavy. The planet-eating Transformer Unicron is already in the mix. He's the big bad guy. They're, I think they're going for a Thanos thing here where he's the threat, but he doesn't really fight them. He's just the guy that's like, oh, I'll be back for you Transformers later. And then they introduce the G.I. Joes at the end of the picture. What is even going on anymore, Hasbro? What are you doing? What I'd like to see from Transformers is I think something they're already doing. There's a new animated Transformers film coming out this year. A lot of big names attached to voice. I haven't seen a single ounce of uh, animation on this thing. No trailers, no teaser. But I'm guessing, I'm hoping it's going to be done in the same way Into the Spider-Verse was done or the new Ninja Turtles movie or Puss in Boots 2. I hope it has a cool stylish look to it. And I really hope they go for broke on what made Transformers so fun. The cool action, the great characters, the fun voices, the cool cars and different vehicles, and just go all in on it. I think it'll be an easy sell for people, and then from there, the sky's the limit. Then we can, we can slowly ratchet things up for the next couple films. As for the live action movies, I just, I, I don't care at all. I think that they tried something with Bumblebee, but instead of like going with that, they kind of led right into the Michael Bay movie at the end. Uh, you know, Sam's car, Bumblebee's in the dealership parking lot where Sam's going to buy it and take off. And then they decided last second, like, oh shit, we don't want to do this. There's more money to be made. Let's spin off into another thing. Let's get the Beast War stuff going on. It's not interesting. And I don't know if they're going to continue with that. I kind of hope they don't, but I think I have a feeling they're going to do the G.I. Joe thing and bring it home. So let's uh, let's focus on the animated one. That's where my interest lies. There are somehow six mainline Resident Evil films with Mila Jovovich. Her husband directs, I think, all of them. These are schlocky at best, horrifically terrible at worst. The first one's fine. I wouldn't even say the first one's top level. Like It's not this great, amazing movie. Much like Fast and the Furious, it does enough well for this base of people that really like that kind of stuff. But for everyone else, I think it was a head-scratching film that sometimes work and occasionally goes into a really silly, weird narrative <laughs> level, which the games all do as well. This The story in the games is complete nonsense with the Umbrella Company and, 
Ada Wong is in the mix as a spy and, and Leon and all these characters come and go and I can't keep heads or tails of it. And I don't think the movies do either. So they just kind of take the things that they really like from the games and smash it together. I gave up on this franchise very early. I think I maybe made it to three. But two was so terribly done, I thought. just It, it felt like the budget wasn't there for what they were trying to do. And then they continued to keep pretending they're better than they are by pulling things from other film franchises that are way cooler, like The Matrix. A lot of the later ones do really feel like they're making her Trinity and she's doing this horrible Walmart version of Bullet Time and there's just no budget there for it or they're really utilizing it in the worst way possible. These movies are beyond fucking stupid and they continue to exist. Now, I think the Mila Jovovich films are done. There was a final chapter. But then we are continuing on with the Netflix Resident Evil and there's the Raccoon City movie that came out a year or so back that was atrociously bad. They will not let this thing die. Because at the end of the day, zombies don't. How do I fix this? I say with this one, you start over. And I think they've attempted to several times, but they haven't got it right yet. And because there's money to be made, let's do it again. Start over. Maybe take it from one of the later games. Go into the Redneck one or uh, Resident Evil Village and go with the vampire chicks. The big gal vampire from the village, she was very popular online. Uh, a lot of search results for her hit I saw. So let's like, let's go with that. That's easy money. Go with the vampire sisters, carry the werewolf stuff over, really go into the scary, dark, disturbed creature feature route instead of just generic zombies. Zombies are played out. So let's play with something else. The number two on my list pains me to say I'm wearing the t-shirt. Uh, Steven Spielberg, huge super fan here, but Jurassic Park really, really has gone through the ringer over the years. Now, I have a soft spot for dinosaurs. I think a lot of people do. They're cool. They're just cool. And we haven't seen them in person. You know, we only have the bones. We only have the sticks and the debris and, and whatever is left of these things. And since for some reason Jurassic Park has a monopoly on dinosaurs, these are the films that keep getting made. Outside of 65 that came out a year or so back, there's just not a lot of dinosaur material often released. So we get what we get. And unfortunately, what we get are really, really stupid movies in this Jurassic Park universe. The first movie is one of my favorite films of all time. Lost World has its fans. I'm not one of them. Is it watchable? To a degree, yes. But it also features some of the worst things the, the franchise has to offer, such as gymnast girl kicking a raptor out a window, like a Charlie Chaplin scene. Uh, it, it's got super unlikable characters with Vince Vaughn and Julianne Moore. But then on the other side, it has a phenomenal RV section where that thing is going out the side of the cliff. It's got the raptors going through the weeds. There is some good stuff here. Unfortunately, it overstays its welcome. It has a very cartoonish final act. And then we go into Jurassic Park 3 that's like 25 minutes long. <laughs> Shoestring budget. They blew all of it on a different version of a film that never got to see the light of day. Lots of problems with the animatronics, lots of problems with the script and the directors. And what we end up getting is honestly, I think an hour and a half movie. It's just in and out, it's a cup of coffee. It's a watchable, digestible trash that I don't need to go back and ever see again. But on occasion, I feel like, you know what? What's a really schlocky movie that's in and out pretty quick? JP3, let's put it on. Now we get to Jurassic World. It does go the soft reboot route. I think it does more right than it does wrong. Characters aren't near as likable, though. Owen by Chris Pratt, who's usually pretty fun, loving, charming. He's just NPC levels of territory here. Just your stock, you know, like holding the hands out, super strong, cool dude that has nothing to bring to the table. And that's very apparent when the, th when the second and third Jurassic World entries kick in and his character kind of changes. Claire's character completely changes. They just have nothing to go on with these people. And so they introduce more and more insane bullshit, like a clone girl. And the animals get freed at the end. And there's this whole cockamamie scheme where the rich people are, are selling off the dinosaurs, much like they did in The Lost World, because nothing's original anymore. 
but they are trained weapons and one of them is built to kill, but in order to command it, you have to point a fucking gun with a laser into other objects for it to attack. Just shoot them. You have the gun. Just shoot them. Listen, I bitched up a storm about these movies. There's plenty of rants and stuff on Jurassic World Fallen Franchise and, and the following one that came after. I don't even remember the name of it. Dominion? Dominican Republic? I don't remember what it's called. It's terrible. It's about locusts, giant locusts destroying the crop field. It's about Owen now able to do the talk to the hand thing to every dinosaur it comes across. It's about baby Blue getting captured, so Blue's pissed. It's about 14 different storylines that are all uninteresting and really go nowhere new or fresh or fun or engaging. It's not scary. It looks fake as crap. It kind of turns into a James Bond movie for a while. I hate this movie. I hate it. And now we have a seventh one in the works. It's never going to end because people love dinosaurs and they're willing to sit through the garbage just to see some cool T-Rex action. So we have another Jurassic World movie on the table. Who knows what this one's going to be called? Jurassic Universe? Jurassic uh, Galaxy? Are we going to go backwards? Are we going to go backwards to Galaxy, then go to Universe? I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. What I would say for this franchise, since again, we have to keep it going. Get, get rid of all of these people. Get rid of Owen. Get rid of Sadler. Get rid of all the originals. Malcolm. We keep dragging their corpses out. But it was a one and done with these people. First movie was magic. Lightning in a bottle. All that crap. Get them out of here. We start small again. We got to go smaller. Not larger. It never works when you go so big that no one can connect to anything. Make it a horror film. Set it in uh, like a suburban area where it's just a single dinosaur or maybe it's just a small pack of dinosaurs have broken out of this mysterious park that's being worked on or the park has been closed down. Everything's shut down and there's only just a small faction of dinosaurs left that they can't contain or I don't know. It's so far gone. I don't actually know how you fix this franchise. They already soft rebooted. So you can't really do that again. And they've already gone so large that you can't even really pull back. It's just too far gone. So you have to find a way to just get a, like one or two people or an individual group of people into a scenario where they just have to get out against all odds. Make it a survival horror film. Okay, maybe it's just like a uh, 72 hours type of situation where a dude's stuck in some rocks and there's a T-Rex stalking him in the background. Uh, you know, like it's a Revenant type film, but with dinosaurs. That would be cool. That would get me back into the theaters. But what am I, what am I saying? I'm gonna be there. It's dinosaurs. Last and certainly least is the number one franchise on my list that continues to thrive, Fast and the Furious. Everybody knows we are 10 movies in 10 11 if you count Hobbs and Shaw 12 if you consider the fact that they at least have one more planned if not seven these movies will never die as long as Vin Diesel has a beating heart these movies are so embarrassing that Vin Diesel is one of the highest paid actors in Hollywood this guy has the easiest set of jobs ever he records I Am Groot, and that makes him tons of residuals. What a, what a treat. Then he just has to go hang out with his buddies for a few months in some lavish area, or stand in front of a green screen, or at this point, he's probably all AI. The last couple movies, I don't think I see any emotion come from this guy. He elicits nothing other than, Time to ride. Family. You messed with the wrong family brother oh yeah that's right i have a brother eight fucking movies in or nine movies in that we never mentioned before in an entire franchise that's built upon family these movies are never about family just saying something doesn't make it true it's the opposite of family these people are garbage they're constantly putting each other in harm's way Going into the backyard occasionally and drinking a Corona with some rap music does not make you a good group of individuals to watch. There is just no chemistry or 
there's just nothing to these. They, they really are like two and a half hour explosion gasms smashed all over the screen. The plots are impractical, they're insane, they're over the top, and all that stuff can be fine. If you're at least following someone that has presence, that has that star power, and Vin, Vin Diesel just has never had that for me. But obviously, I don't know shit, because these movies continue to do huge numbers. And I know they said the last one was a little disappointing from a financial standpoint. Well, yeah, when it costs like a billion to make, obviously it's not gonna make as much. These things are so overblown with the budgets. Now let's pull back. How would I fix Fast and the Furious? Well, I personally don't like any of them. Not even the first one is my cup of tea. I'm not really into muscle cars. I've already seen Point Break, so the plot's already recycled from that. This does nothing unique or different. Paul Walker is the only character that can kind of act in these things. Vin Diesel just never did anything for me. What I would do as someone that doesn't care in the slightest, but thinking about people that actually like these movies originally, is I would get back to street racing. I would just go back to street racing. I don't even know if I'd put Vin Diesel in them. Or what I'm thinking is you find a way to pass the torch. Diesel's no spring chicken, okay? I really don't think at the end of the day that many car enthusiasts or fans of this franchise really care that much about Dominic Toretto. I think that they just care about the fast cars, <laughs> the good looking women, and everybody's aging up. So let's get some young blood in here. Let's take it to a, let's take it back to the streets again. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they just want to keep seeing Vin Diesel jump off CG for the rest of his life. Maybe that's all they want. That's all they ever wanted. I don't know. But I do know this. These five film franchises are completely out of control. They're dumb as a fucking box of rocks. And I want to see some changes, damn it. Let me hear from you, though. Do you agree with me? Or do you think, Adam, there's a reason these are number one for a reason. People love this stuff. They can't get enough of it. Let me know in the comments below. Please like the video if you enjoyed this, got something out of it. Subscribe as I post tons of movie content each and every week. Would love to have you stick around. And if you want to see me in person, I am coming out of the cave for the first time ever. I will be at Orlando, Florida in just a couple days after this goes out onto the internets. I'm going to be at Megacon. I'll be there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday doing three different panels with some fun movie critics. It would be awesome if you could attend. There's still tickets available, at least for the day-to-days. I think the, the Super Pack or whatever sold out, but there's still dailies you can get. I'd love to talk movies. I'd love to hang out, grab a bite to eat, do whatever. I'm, I'm around. I'm ready to go. Alrighty. Hopefully I see you next time. Take care.